Hey everyone, Facebook friends, thanks so much for joining Josh and I today. Um, this is Josh Jeter, he is with Fairway Mortgage Group. Uh, the Fairway Mortgage, the Wood Group. The Wood Group, yes. Uh, say that for everybody, so that people know how to get in touch with you. And um, the feds just met yesterday, or had a big conference, or well, they say the feds met yesterday, or whatever, and um, talked about uh, a couple of things. They actually did do a rate hack, but what I wanted to talk to you first about was this uh, LLPA um, that they've been talking about and then delayed, um, which is going to cost people more money. So can you explain what that is and why the mortgage uh, mortgage uh, loan officers are so upset about that and want that to go away? Yeah, so um, so first off, LLPA stands for Loan Level Price Adjustment. Um, and that's something that uh, Fannie Mae, which is a big giant government sponsored entity or GSE, um, is pushing out. Um, and basically what it is, is it's talking about how we're gonna change how you get an interest rate. Um, so we're gonna be looking at your interest, or sorry, your credit, score as well as we call your loan to value. So basically based on how much money you have as your down payment and your credit score will be changing on how you get your interest rate. Now originally this was scheduled to be um, live or in effect starting May 1st, um, but because of kind of the housing market being in a correction phase as well as the interest rates and inflation, uh, they've delayed that now until August 1st. Um, so keep in mind that that probably means if you're buying a home in July, you probably will get affected by this. Um, it shouldn't be huge, huge impacts um, to your to your interest rate, uh, but just because it's an unknown thing uh, right now, loan officers don't really want a whole lot of extra change right. um, because we're already seeing rates being super volatile right now, um, moving up and down um, with every single day some new data comes out and rates are being either adversely or positively affected by that. So we're just trying to say, if we're gonna do this thing, let's just wait until we're in a uh, little bit more stable. Can we please time. take a breath first before? <laughs> so this is, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, this is sort of like mortgage insurance, except for you still have this fee, um, even though you're making more than a 20% down payment sometimes? Right. So um, if you put more than 20% down, your, your interest rate will be affected. Um, so it's not necessarily a separate payment that you're making, but it will go into the factor on how you get an interest rate, like what interest rate you, you end up ending. Um, right. So, and that's gonna affect every single mortgage lender. It's not just gonna be just Fairway or just another mortgage company. It's every single mortgage company that um, ends up selling their loans to Fannie Mae, this big government sponsored entity. It's going, it's mm -hmm. going to So that. every single mortgage will be affected by it, not yeah. just locally here in Lincoln. I think it's interesting because when you're listening to the news and you're hearing, well, rates today should be about 6.55, but then you call your mortgage lender and they're like 8.376, you know, and it's, so how, that's probably one of the reasons why that have it happens on top of mortgage companies need to make money, right? Right. In order to stay in business and keep offering loans so that we have a choice, right? Right. And so one of the big things that I'm noticing is that, yeah, you're right, we keep hearing these national numbers are you know, six and a half, and, and you're right, locally, I'm, I'm looking at it, you know, a seven point something. Um, and so one of the biggest things that I'm seeing with that is that a lot of mortgage lenders are um, doing what we call discount points or where you can buy down the rate. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna affect obviously your interest rate and your APR, but sometimes that's actually not what's best for you. Because if you don't have an extra, you know, four or five, six thousand dollars in your bank account to fork over at closing, it may not be what's best for you. And that's why I definitely recommend talking to a live person about what fits your needs because we we can offer those as well um, but for a lot of people it just doesn't make sense for right now right and we'll get to that in a minute so what i think is interesting is because if anything came out of 2008 um was you know because 2008 was a housing crash but it was caused by the finance the loose financing low morals it's mm -hmm. caused by uh, loose lending practices which caused um, the housing market to crash so in today's environment there's there's no housing crash um, coming as it relates to what the impact what the factors were in 2008 so we don't have that drama anymore because they tightened credit but what we're hearing today is because we did have uh, the Silicon Valley Bank crash and we did we do have other banks that are kind of falling apart that from that we could see more credit tightening such as you know we have we talked to a lot of people today well you know we thought we turned in all of our documents well they're asking you for another thing I've already provided that three times and people are getting really frustrated and they're calling us 
they're getting frustrated with their lender because they're being asking. So is this something that you're seeing could come out of this correction that we're having right now rather than a housing crash, it could be credit tightening? Um, I think so a little bit. Um, so you're right, after that 2008, there was a lot of what we call predatory lending where you're offering subprime loans, meaning people who should have never gotten a loan were getting loans for entirely too much money. And obviously they couldn't make the payment. Um, that's not what we're facing right now because of all the um, things that they implemented after 08. So we're very strict on the amount of documents that are required to give our licensing for loan officers uh, significantly increased after that as well. So what I'm seeing right now is, right, it's not really a housing market issue and it's not really a mortgage market issue either. Um, these banks are having a hard time because of how they're investing or lending their money. So I don't think it's necessarily tied to the mortgage or real estate piece in its entirety. I think we could see um, the Fed and some other government entities um, tighten, if you will, on the policy on how banks are lending money, um, not necessarily for mortgages, but for like investments. Um, so they, do, they lend each other stuff overnight, we call it overnight loan. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where we'll see more of it, which won't affect the everyday. Won't affect real estate, no. house buying, things like that. And right. I think that it is causing a lot of confusion because well, a lot of the headlines are, are the interest rates are going up, blah, 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 but that's not necessarily housing and mortgage rate. It has more to do with investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that leads me to another thing is to try to clarify for a lot of people when people say the feds are hiking the rate, um, but the mortgage rates tend to follow the 10 year treasury. So can you clarify a little bit of that for us? Yeah. Um, so obviously when the Fed is raising rates, they're really talking about raising uh, the benchmark rate, which is really more for banks. Like you said, those investments, like you look at your savings account now, I'm guessing your savings account has a much higher interest rate than it did a year ago. Um, that's really more of what the Fed, when they're talking about raising rates, that's more of what they're actually looking at raising. Uh, now, obviously mortgage rates can be affected by that, but really we follow something called a 10 year treasury bond a little bit closer than the Fed. Um, and so that 10 year treasury bond right now is really mainly being affected actually by inflation. Uh, so when we start seeing inflation go down, regardless of the Fed, we'll start seeing mortgage rates go down. Okay. So it's kind of not necessarily tied to the Fed. Uh, yesterday the Fed met and they raised the interest rate by 25 basis points or like 0.25%. And we actually got a, a mortgage rate reduction after that. And we got an email that said mortgage rates went down, check for new pricing today. So. <laughs> It's interesting because, yeah, that can, um, the Fed's raising that, the Fed rate, which impacts investments, can cause uh, additional confidence, which helps reduce the, the mortgage rate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It gets really confusing. I just try <laughs> to keep it straight on a daily basis. I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, so overall, buying a home today, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people also tend to look at buying a home as, uh, relative to buying stocks, which is completely different because the pricing of stocks can adjust very quickly, hour to hour, minute to minute, whereas home prices are pretty much like, this is the value of a home today based on what homes sold for over the last six months, and a home is only worth what a, a buyer is willing to pay for it. So locking in or buying a home based on the home price is very different than buying stocks, which could fluctuate. What does fluctuate is the rate, but we do anticipate those going down, making buying a home today still very affordable, it's still a very smart decision because right. you can date the rate, marry the house, but date the rate, right? So can you right. talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, so I think most of you have probably heard this, marry the house, date the rate. Um, so really what they're talking about is with dating the rate, you can refinance your house uh, for a lower interest rate and the good news is it usually doesn't cost all that much money um, with a refinance piece. And you can actually, most of the time, roll that refinance cost into your loan. So you don't actually have to pay much money, if any, out of pocket. So, um, and usually we look at trying to look at what your break even is. So if you say your rate is at 7%, we can say, oh, well, tomorrow's rate might be 6%. We can look at your break even. How many months will it take for you to be ahead if you were to refinance? versus if you just kept the loan as is. So um, that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is that when you refinance, most of the time, we don't actually take any money from your pocket, which is kind of nice. We just take it from the, um, the equity you already have in your house. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and so, I, but I think what people get confused on when they go to apply for a loan is you still have to qualify for the loan based on today's rate. Mm -hmm. 
That's correct. Um, so we do offer some temporary buy down options as well, where you can temporarily reduce your interest rate for either one year, two years, or three years. Um, but you still have to qualify for the full interest rate because think about the life of a loan of 30 years, most of your payments are gonna be at that full interest rate, assuming you don't refinance. Um, right. So that's kind of an important part that we still look at. Yeah, we have to consider the full interest rate even if you're only paying a reduced interest rate temporarily. Exactly. So we in our office are actually seeing a lot more listings coming to the market. My my phone is actually blowing up um, saying, hey, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, uh, which I think is great because um, Buyers will have more to choose from, uh, so they shouldn't have to worry too much or should find it quite, uh, quite a, a surprise that they actually have a uh, few options, a few houses to choose from. Um, but you can temporarily lower your monthly payment until the actual rates come down with the 2-1 buy down. Right, so um, we offer a few different types of buy downs. We have a 3 2 1 buy down, a 2 1 buy down, and a 1 0. I think our 2 1 is kind of the most popular, so I'll spend just a couple seconds talking about 2 1 buy downs. Um, so, a 2 1 buy down is uh, the 2 in the front stands for a 2% reduction in your interest rate during the first year. Mm -hmm. So, let's say you're 7%, it's the full note rate, and then that means the first year you're making your payments, you're only going to be paying 5% or 2% less than. Um, and then that second year, you get a just a 1% reduction, so you'd be at a 6% interest rate. And then obviously after that, you're going to be paying the full 7%. So what's kind of nice about this 2-1 buy-down is you're probably thinking, okay, well, where does this money come from, yeah. right? And usually we can get the seller of the home to pay for that buy-down for you, which is a really, really nice way to have some graduated payments. So you're starting with a lower monthly payment, you're increasing the next year, you're increasing the next year. And the best part is, is not your money that you're spending, it's the seller's money that you're using to do that graduated payment. So. Yeah, so that's where I was going with that, is to say that with the sellers that are coming on the market, they actually need to sell. I mean, people today aren't just selling their home because they are just thinking it would be nice to have da 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 or live somewhere else or this. These sellers actually need to need to move, whether they're relocating or downsizing or whatever the story is. And we are telling them about the 2-1 buy down, which they are more than willing to offer um, to because it actually works out great for both parties. It works out great for the seller because they are looking at, they don't want to do a massive price discount. But so it's more affordable for them to pay for the 2 1 buy down for the benefit of the buyer. And on the buyer's side, they are actually getting a much more affordable payment than if they had asked for a $10,000, dollars 20000 price discount. So that's where I was going with that. You actually have more listings coming on the market. The sellers are typically available or willing to consider a 2 1 buy down versus a price reduction. And it actually works out great for the buyer. That's right, I think right now is actually a great time to buy because of that. When interest rates drop, we're gonna see more buyers enter the market and that's gonna drive up competition, which means you won't be able to find as many homes for either under list price or with these concessions, these seller concessions where they're offering to pay for these temporary buy downs. So I think if you're looking to because buy- Because sellers don't have to because there's more buyers out there buying. Right, yeah. so if you're looking to buy, I think actually right now is, is one of the best times for the foreseeable future. Yeah, and I know there, that we talked about a lot today and it can be very confusing. As a matter of fact, real estate transactions are just getting more and more complex um, as we go on. And so if you are even remotely interested in, you know, you think you need to move, you need to do this, you need to change, whatever, please uh, contact Josh or myself. Uh, we are happy just to have a very relaxed, informal conversation about what all is involved, answer any of the questions you have, map out a couple of different options for you, um, and, and go from there. So Josh, how do they reach you if they want to talk about mortgage or applying for a loan? <laughs> yeah, so one of the best ways is actually if you go to my website, um, and it's just joshdieter.com. My last name's a little hard to spell, so it's J-O-S-H for Josh, and then Dieter is D-I-E-T-E-R-T. -E so joshdeeter.com, it has all my contact info, my cell number, whatnot. I'd love to have a conversation with you. I'm a former teacher, so I'm happy to educate, even if you don't end up buying with us. I want no, to educate. No more dumber questions that what, than what high school kids could <laughs> uh, ask, right? It's very, very true. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, and you obviously know how to um, contact us. You can DM, you can uh, call, stop by the office. We're right here next door to Morosa's Pizzeria, Pizzeria and Hemingway's. Um, thanks so much for watching, and we hope to hear from you soon.